Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. <laughs> Welcome. This is the Sports Trap Podcast, and my name is John Trap. How we doing, fellas? Once again, we come together for the people. What up? What up, dude, man? I was taking a nap waiting for you, John. Jeez. Mr. Claw, how you doing? I'm still getting used to these finger, finger point. I don't know how it comes up to me, but on my screen. Am I pointing right, Claw? Am I yeah, pointing yeah, to yeah. you? No, uh, it pointing to me. Not, no, no, no. Uh, it's to me. Oh, it's to me on my screen, so that's what matters. <laughs> Damn, fool, you selfie. Who am I pointing to now, Claw? You point to your... <laughs> <laughs> We're still getting used to it, people. But uh, I was trying to point to Chris. Chris, how you doing, sir? Clutch, what does that say? Sweet City. Oh, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Old school retro shit right here. You can't find this, man. You got to you gotta hit the, uh, the good wheels. Hey, man, y'all got to get those uh, mental wheels turning because the top 10 we got for you to – or this, this coming up episode is going to be top 10 Rockets of all time. Stay tuned for that one. We, we're going to put it all together and send it out to the people. Of course, this is the People's Podcast, Sports Trap Podcast. Yes, sir. Uh, but first, of course, we got to get down to the real. We got to get down to the uh, topics at hand when we got the B.O.B. virus. I'm sorry. I mean, the COVID-19 virus, the coronavirus, the uh, Chinese <clears throat> virus. I'm sorry. Uh you know, we got to just get it all out there, you know? You know? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> all right. Yeah, man. So, um, speaking hey. of B.O.B. Hey, John, it's not a Chinese virus that you have it. This is a Colombian virus after that. Oh, that's, man. Listen, if it's Colombian, it's grade A. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not, I wonder how many people out there in the streets just, like, don't know what to do with themselves, man. You know, liquor sales have been out the roof. Texas is leading the way for the entire nation as far as uh, alcohol consumption. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> During, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Besides that, they're saying there's going to be a lot of babies born in December. But, man, that, it's so risky, man, to even remotely even think about having a baby when, you know, the babies are at risk. So I don't even know why they're even – people. Are, I, guess they kind of I don't think it do works that, that way, Chris. I think, like, people are, are more thinking about in the moment. And – uh they just, you know, let one slip, and yeah, my, that's all it my takes. W- my wife comes near me. I'm spraying lights off. She knows what's <laughs> up. That's terrible, dude. Sorry, Daisy. Is, um, I cannot say the same, but you look I, 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 I can't. I can. Uh, hope it's up to this point, we're 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 kid free. Well, uh, baby in the oven free. So. We'll see, man. We'll see in nine months. <laughs> oh, I, I was telling Daisy, I said, man, I wouldn't be surprised. Somebody, some idiot, I'm not going to say what race, but they're going to name one of their kids covered. I guarantee it, man. It's going to be the one. Of oh, them. I know. You already know, I was man. thinking about that. I was like, who's going to be the first one to when in, in, in like 20 years from now? What's your name? Yeah, my name's covered. Oh, uh, that's a cool name. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It'll never be cute. That's why I said, I don't know if you check my, my IG page, but I said the top two costumes for Hallow- Halloween 2020 is going to be the COVID-19 COVID virus and then Joe Exotic. Oh, Tony, Joe right Exotic now. for sure. Tony, man. You know people are going to walk around in COVID-19, that little uh, uh, virus symbol. They're going to walk around with that stupid virus on. I hope not, man. Man, they are. I man, come not. on, man. People, when have people ever... Or, or a big bottle of Corona. I bet yeah. people are going to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, did you hear that they stopped production on yeah. Corona? Somebody got really? sick, right? Well, they, their sales have been ridiculous. I'm, I, I am trying to do my best to help out Corona mm-hmm. in these tough times because you know, I, I, I uh, um, you know, the economy needs my help. You know, <laughs> I was thinking about that because I, I feel like when when the news first broke. I feel like Corona sales were down because people were kind of scared. 33%, then, dude, out the but, roof. But then, I, but I feel like it was after. It was like, well, once we actually got quarantined, they're like, well, let me actually go buy some Corona now. And I think, yeah, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like their sales have been, yeah, crazy. Well, they, they went down enough for everybody not to 
um, for them to stop production. So that's crazy. That that in itself was like what? Mm. But yeah. Uh, hey, Chris. What's up, man? So did you hear the news? Did you what, hear the news? news? What's did the you news? hear 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 the uh, Bill O'Brien rebuttal? No way, man. He actually came out and said something. So he 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 was saying he literally said. I mean, uh, I think I busted myself off the screen. <laughs> so, but anyways, he literally said, "Well, as I get this back up and running, he literally said that um, uh, DeAndre Hopkins wanted a raise, and that's one of the reasons that we got rid of him because it's the better overall." Uh, it's better overall for the Texans. Um, I've never heard that. I've never heard somebody actually admit the fact that they traded him because he wanted a raise. Mm, mm, oh, yeah, mm. I thought that was I thought that was like common knowledge, like right when this came out. No, he will. Okay, that was a report, right? But Bill O'Brien, nobody admits this. I've heard the reports before, but nobody actually comes out and actually says it. And Bill O'Brien actually came out and said it. That wait, wait. DeAndre Hopkins wanted a raise. Wait, wait. wait as he, a he, reason to why he traded him. There's no – there's never, ever another reason why someone gets traded. So, to me, uh, that means nothing. Because well, anyone will always get traded because they're asking for more money and they – you know, the team won't want to give it to them, hands down. So – well, I, this is this is a quote. A this is a quote by by good old Bob. There's a lot of things that go into trades, a lot of thoughts that go in. How much are you going to take on contractually? How much does it take to buy that second round pick, that number forty pick? What type of player you're bringing in? What type of player you're losing? And what is best for the interests of the team? That's a Bill O'Brien quote right there. So, honestly, do you think that uh, that was in the best interest of the team? When absolutely. It comes down to- well, absolutely not, especially if you're saying that, you know, what goes into trade is, is literally the first thing he says is how much you're going to take on contractually. Look how much he's taken on contractually through, these, through this trade. I mean, he, he's paying $10 million for, for David Johnson, who's not worth $10 million. And then you just paid another nineteen million dollars to uh, Randall Cobb, who's definitely not worth nineteen million dollars. That in itself, right there, is what we're looking at thirty million dollars. You know what Randall Cobb's contract reminds me of? Reminds me of Ed Reed. How'd that turn oh. out, Chris? Oh, it turned out like uh, hot garbage. One of my, except. Except. Did he even finish the season? I think no. that the week eight, he <laughs> he just went home. Well, the funny thing about all this is that that we not only did we sign him, but we never even gave him a fucking physical, which turned out to be he had a bad hip, and that's why he didn't play. Um, but that was your boy. That was that was um, Rick Teflon Smith, man. Da- Teflon Rick, baby. That's what we used to call him back in the days. Because then none he could do, he'd get shot. He would get in trouble. He would never get in trouble. <laughs> Teflon well, listen, Rick. Hey, so, uh, who do you think is a better GM? Ah, <laughs> at this point, I would take Teflon Rick over Bill O'Brien, because it's not even not even Teflon Rick would have would have would have remotely even brought in ten million dollars of David Johnson's contract. He would have been like, you know. See, I don't think that's okay. So I don't really have a problem, and I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I I don't have a problem with him getting rid of DeAndre Hopkins. I think at the end of the day, uh, what we might be getting in return might if anything might be just as good all right if it's just if we all wash the state clean and look at everybody's career here on forth i think that if we can get two good years two or three good years out of either randall cobb or david johnson would be just as well if not better because it's two different positions um as as opposed to getting two two or three good years out of deandre hopkins uh, so I don't necessarily see it as a as a dire move, but the one thing that bothers me when it comes to Bill O'Brien is how he constructs the 
the trades to get them to get them made. So, for example, we took on half of of uh, Clowney's contract last year. We're taking on some of uh, oh, excuse me. We're taking on the rest of what was so. I mean, at this point, it looks like a bad contract in David Johnson. Like what we're willing to give up as far as getting rid of a player is so much as far as cap space is concerned than it is where, when we take somebody else's uh, player and they're not willing to give up their cap space like we are. And that's where I think that Bill O'Brien is, up to this point, has been horrendous as a GM. Not necessarily yeah. the trades, but like people, person for person, I really, really haven't seen or had a problem with it. But as far as cap and the way cap is constructed, and it, that's what your, your, your thing is based on uh, as, as far as making the team better, then I, that's where I disagree with him. That's where I see his biggest fault as a GM. Well, I, again, I don't think that, the, that this trade had anything to do with, with picking up players that could help the team. Because if you're, picking up teams, if you're picking up players that help the team, you're not picking up these two players and lose one of your best players. And I, I just want to give this quote to Qual because I think this, this would resonate if you, uh, us as, as – especially I know how passionate he is about being – a Houston Texans fan, but this Bill O'Brien goes on to say, it's important that we focus is the team or the, the, it's important that the focus is the team. And I would think as a fan, I would be really excited that your leadership of the team can make bold moves and go out and do things to make a team better. Bill O'Brien uh, said multiple times that every decision made by the trio is made with the team in mind. Mm. I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I heard that quote, and uh, I think that's a good quote, but that's just him talking, and the actions haven't, you know, that they haven't lived up to that yet. So as a fan who I agree with the sentiment of what he's saying, I agree with the fact that anything that you do uh, as a GM and as a coach, you know, should be in the best interest of a team, for sure. But is that, is that what he actually did? That's why, you know, I mean, it's hard for me because I see your point, Chris. I feel like it, it just doesn't add up, you know, and John even said it. It's like, man, you know, how, how can you preach these things? How can you say, oh, you know, we're doing things for the betterment of the team and we're looking at what um, is going to happen uh, contractually um, and we want to take on the best contract, contracts or whatever, and, and he's thinking about those things, but then – look at what he's taking on when, you know, his reasoning was that he didn't want to, I guess in his mind, he thought that whatever DeAndre was asking for wasn't worth it for him to sign that contract. But then that he took on some other bullshit contract. So, you know, I mean, like, like I, I hear what he's saying, but what he's, what he's doing doesn't add up. So it's like, man, you can say all these things. It's like, you can say all the right things you want, but at the end of the day, it's the actions that, that the fans should care about that. I'm going to be like, yo, what the hell, you know? Isn't, don't you think that's a window into how egocentric he is to actually say that as fans, we should be excited that he is such a great leader that he's willing to make bold moves. That is so narcissistic, especially when everybody, including the writers who normally write for you and, and are biased are like, this is the worst trade in the history of Houston sports especially for what you got back. He's not even willing to address the fans. Hey, I understand you guys are upset. I'm sorry you lost one of your favorite players. No, you should be happy I made this trade because I am God's gift to not only coaching, but God's gift of, of GM. I just gave you guys better players because I'm the man. That's pretty much what he's saying here. <laughs> well, not to say that he, he – um... He deserves it just yet, man. You know, you know, we'll we'll see what he ends up being as a as a head coach. I think he's got um, basically one more year left to prove himself, and if not, that's that's it, man. I, I can't see anybody, anybody, anybody keeping uh, Bill O'Brien after this. But um, fellas, uh, fellas, man, I, I I we got I digress. We got to move on, and we got to uh, talk about what's going on in the NBA landscape, fellas. Uh, man, so I know there's not a lot of basketball on, but uh, real quick with the news, the NBA news, you got them potentially canceling the season, seeing how much uh, basically 
how, if any way, they can salvage the season. And they're already starting to put their lawyers together to that to if in the event of them canceling the season, they're going to ask players if they've already given the money to. Uh, they're going to ask the players to give twenty five percent of their pay back to the NBA, <laughs> um, and then <laughs> and then the people that that uh, literally do not do not have uh, or have not been paid. They're literally gonna cut their checks twenty five percent short. Um, so that's the that's the NBA news as it stands. Wow. But uh, the bigger news, the be- be- bigger news for the NBA fans, for us to enjoy uh, and 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 honor the players, is none other than um, we got Kevin Garnett finally getting into the NBA Hall of Fame. Woo. All right, all right. Um, we got Timmy D. As much as I liked him, he was just as big as a rival. And Chris, I, I think you should mention this next person. Number that, three. Uh, uh, I, I think 24, it's twenty-four, sir. I, twenty-four, sir. Get it right. <laughs> no, I'm saying that the, the third person that we're going to mention that entered is going to be in the NBA Hall of Fame is. Did you mention Kobe Bryant? Hey, my man, my man, um, Kobe Bryant. Uh, help keep the world together, man. You see it falling apart afterwards, but uh, yeah. Uh, and and Qual, wow, man. Yeah, I thought hey. you would you would you'd be for sure on top of this one. Nah, yeah, no. Kobe's great, but don't forget uh, another one that is going to be class of twenty twenty Hall of Fame, Mister Rudy Tomjanovich. Yes, sir, Mister Intro. Never hey, estimate Rudy the T heart himself. of a champion. Yeah, Absolutely. there you go. Uh, we open every show with that quote. That's one of the biggest quotes of my lifetime that I ever have ever heard. Uh, one that I use almost damn near every every day. Um, and yeah, man, I think every champ could relate to that one quote. And such mm-hmm. a motivational piece uh, that uh, we use it, like I said, every day, every intro that we post this um, podcast up on YouTube. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the 2020 class. Kobe Bryant, KG, Timmy D, and Rudy T. There's a couple of – there's a a couple of others. I'll just mention them real quick. Uh, There's also uh, Tamika Ketchings, who's going to be a player. Uh, uh, Kim Mulkey, uh, Barbara Stevens, the coach, uh, Eddie Sutton coach, and Patrick Bauman. So those – that is officially the class of 2020. Uh, real quick, that's the whole real quick, so get, uh, mm. something I read the other day about Rudy T that I thought was important, um, and it just kind of said uh, – speaking of, you know, I've kind of clowned the uh, Lakers organization in the past, but I was reading the other day that when Rudy T became the coach of the Lakers, he only got to coach, like, I think, like 25 games, and then he had to leave because he, was, he got sick. Um, and even after that, they owed him $30 million in the contract. So what they did was they paid him out his full contract for the, even when he wasn't coaching and, um, he actually became like a scout for the Lakers. And I just think that, you know, I brought that up because you have the NBA who's saying, Hey, some of these players need to play their, you know, pay some of this money back. But I think it's also important that to recognize an organization that paid somebody, especially in today's times. Um, who was sick, and they could have easily just said, you know, the contract's voided, but they paid his money out. So, you know, Matt Prop to realize that they had some, they had a good person in Rudy T. So, yeah, Rudy, awesome. Rudy T. made made a lot of um, made a lot of good contacts, and and of course, man, led the Houston Rockets to to uh, two championships. And and the infamous quote comes from winning one of those champions because everybody had him down. Everybody had a uh, the 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 actually. The Knicks were supposed to to beat us. Uh, the you know, Orlando Magic were supposed to beat us. Uh, I remember all those those games, man. I didn't get to watch him as a player, but um, as as a as a coach, man, he was my first greatest coach of all time. You know, when I looked at back on it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, man, good times, good times. Of course, can't forget uh, the rise. Of, I got to see the rise of Kevin Garnett. Uh, I got to see the rise of, of Kobe Bryant, and they were almost like the ones that ushered in the new era for me. As as opposed, you know, the the uh, you know, I, I I don't know how else the, the hip hop era, you know, uh, they were part of that, and uh-huh. 
and made NBA more of a of a um, a game for the people. To be honest with you, you know, not just you know a certain uh, demographic, not not just a certain, but actually in my generation, it related to my generation a whole lot more than baseball kind of did uh, at the same time in NFL. So uh, Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, um, Rudy T, of course. Yeah, and of course, man, don't forget to mention, uh, we can't men- uh, forget to mention Timmy D, that boy Tim Duncan, the big fundamental. If we had somebody like Shaq to to be the opposite, the antithesis uh, of Timmy mm-hmm. D, man, the consummate professional. Wow. Somebody that wow. You could- these words. Man, jump, man. These <laughs> SAT words, man. Look at this. Magic. Right there. Boom. <laughs> the oh, magic I mean, I mean. oh. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, so yeah, no, I, I just think Timmy D, man, I remember hearing stories about how the coach could yell at him and literally uh, him being the leader of the team, being yelled at and taking it. Yeah. Uh, the coach would be like, listen, man, if the leader falls in line, then everybody else can't say nothing because Timmy D, of course, didn't say anything when he was getting reprimanded. But we all know what happened at the end anyways. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, a.k.a. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Um, so that didn't work out too well after Timmy D left. But, yeah, man, great class. We all grew up with that NBA, that era, and we're going to see our – our athletic heroes get into the to Hall of Fame. Chris, man, <laughs> any thoughts about NBA and, and how they're, they're going about this whole COVID-19? I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't pay me my money, I'm not giving it back. <laughs> so, uh, no 25% uh, discount? Yeah, maybe because think about most of these players already, that money that they've already cashed and that money has already been paid on things that they need. Like, more gold chains, and for James Harden, more strippers. I mean, come on now. I mean, just saying. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't ask a stripper hey, back hey, for listen, her money. Man. Listen, no offense. I'm not here to count pennies and count nobody's money, but big houses they cost a lot of money. Hell yeah. You ain't, you yeah, know, you but make get, it, you, guess what, John? That's not pennies you're counting there. That's millions of dollars. That's, hey, but they're spending millions of dollars. Those are big houses. They got to get paid for. Man, my house takes a hundred dollars in energy. I can't imagine what a house with twenty rooms is like. I I don't I don't see how y'all are siding with the players. I really don't get it because uh, with everything going on, you know, and uh, you know they're played to do what to play, which they ain't playing. So well, that's true. That's that, true. That is true. And and uh, look, this is a world crisis that that you know forced everything to stop. So you're, you're just going to, you know, like if, if people are actually working, oh, yeah, you should get paid hands down easily. But uh, I see it as, you know, why not? You know, there it's it's a way, you know, because I think that the way I see it, the way that they would probably come at it with the lawyers and everything. I know you were uh, you brought it up a little bit, John. You didn't really get into it with Rich Paul doing the contracts because he is like the agent for, for like a, a big number. Yeah, Rich Paul, of, he, he got him to sign 90 percent. Before I think Christmas, for for all the players to get paid their contract of the year, ninety percent. So mm-hmm. what what did you, what did you say earlier? Twenty twenty five percent, right? Yeah. So the it. NBA will it, for events like this, the NBA has it in their CBA and contract language to say that if something were to happen where the season couldn't continue or something like this were to happen in the event, then twenty five percent of all players' salaries would go down across the board. So where so where would it go? They wouldn't go to anybody. It would stay in their pockets. The NBA owners and the NBA wouldn't pay out. Oh. Hey, but see, but is, the players that get paid out, they got to send that 25% back. <laughs> no, but this is the reason why well, I say for them to keep their money. And why normally I know why you're saying I'm siding with the players. I wouldn't normally say that. But when the COVID-19 happened, many of these owners didn't even want to pay the employees, um, the ones who were laid off, um, they even hey, cut new their words in- for, they even, for long, for long. They even Exactly. They even cut their insurances. Uh, Tim Furtado cut all the players that worked at Toyota Center's insurance. 
Um, and then he got a lot of flack from Houston Chronicle, and then he re-upped that. But I'm looking at all the players in the NBA that decided to give five, ten million dollars to pay for these these individuals' uh, yeah, I salaries. That was kind of money. weird. And I, I think that's kind of sad that the owners didn't step up when they have way more money compared to the athletes, and the athletes were the ones who actually gave up that money. So that's why I'm saying, hey. Well, no, 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 I think that's great of the players. I guess I was looking at, again, from the optimist side, that if they give that money back, that it would be, you know, given to the proper channels, given to the proper people that, that would need it. So, I mean, if that's not being done, then – I mean, I see where you're coming from, and I would probably side with you as well on that because, I mean, the way I see it, yeah, it needs to be distributed correctly, you know, to uh, the right aid or to the right people or to, to donate it to the right cause or whatever, right? And I don't right. think they should just flat out just keep that. But if that's what's happening, then, yeah. I mean, I see, I see your point then, you yeah. know? See, the thing about well, it is I feel like I, I was going to tell you real fast, John, a lot of people don't realize that um, the biggest – one of the biggest hits – that one of the owners have taken is Tillman for uh, Tillman for Tata, especially with with all of his Landry owned businesses closing down. So he's been the biggest advocate of getting the NBA running again, and then been the biggest advocate of not paying the people at Toyota Center. And then we're finding out um, on MSNBC they mentioned that there's an owner right now that might have to sell his ownership because when when the when Tillman for Tata bought the Rockets, um, no one really knew, and I'm surprised the NBA didn't channel this. But he has a lot of money that he has in debt. Like he had to borrow money, basically put all his businesses, restaurant businesses, as collateral to even pay the billions of dollars that he paid for the Rockets. And now he's in serious trouble. So Don't forget the casinos. Oh, okay. Yeah, casinos. I, I want well, to. Yeah. I want. I, uh, like for. Okay. As much as I don't want to count players' pennies and and their money and stuff, uh, if I'm gonna do that for the players, I'm gonna do it for the owners too. First of all. When you, call, when you talk about Tillman Fertitta and his situation, you got to understand all his, like 90% of his money is tied up into uh, leisure, restaurants, casinos, and even the, you want to include the Rockets. It's all money that he is not going to get because every one of those businesses basically is shut down. I don't care if you're doing to-go, right? From what you – your, your to-go sales is probably something around the, the – the uh, area around 10% of all your sales as far as a restaurant is concerned. Uh, certainly one of the restaurants like Landry's own businesses and, and his, um, like, for example, Papa's, those are sit-down, dine-in places. They're, they're not mainly to go. And so for it to go down to 10%, and then I, I don't even know how the casinos are, are working as, a, as of right now. Um, but all those businesses that he owns aren't deemed essential. They're, they're just not. So when you talk about somebody that has ownership of so much property, that's all about uh, unessential business. And it's basically shut down without any government, um, I guess, uh, backing as far as like support or if they, if there is, it's minimal. Um, I mean, if it's anything like what we're, as a private citizen is getting uh, 1500 in what, four months possibly, if I'm getting it by mail? I mean, just imagine what the businesses are getting, um, small businesses. And I don't even know if Fertitta is, uh, is included in that. But what I'm saying is with everything shutting down, there's no way to put out money, not only just to put out money, but to put out money for something that you don't know when it's going to uh, basically stop. You know, when does the when does the bleeding stop and when does the well dry up? You got to think about that as a business as a business situ, uh, person or in a business setting. You have to think about that. And they, they plan for years in advance, months in advance. And all that money is basically up in the air. And that's the way they see it. Like, how do I hold on to this so that way my business doesn't plunder? Because I'm losing. I'm sure he's losing millions and millions of dollars. Well, that's that's what I was gonna say is that they're they're finding out that uh, that his net worth his net worth was not a billion dollars because of how much money he had to borrow and and how much. But that's not had. something that that's not something that's uncommon for it's, for it's, owners it's, to do. It's not uncommon for owners to do, but when you go and buy a team for four billion dollars and you're not even worth four billion dollars, 
to me, that to me is, is a little bit questionable because I'm telling you right now, now the reason why I say this is because I can't, there's been plenty of owners that have come to buy sports teams and they look at their finances and they're like, listen, you're, you, if something happens to you, if, if there's an emergency or there's a catastrophe, can you hold yourself up on your end? And, and these are things that they look at. And it just is why I think that, you know, Tillman Furtado at the end of the day got a team because it's a, a, you know, a good old boy network and they hooked him up because he probably shouldn't have owned the team. That's well, yeah. Saying. I mean, if anything, if he loses the team, it's on just the fact that it because he bought it in the moment it happened, period. If it would have been any time, other time, like, you know, the Bensons when they bought the Hornets and when, when so-and-so bought – uh, Michael Jordan bought the Bobcats back in the day before he made it the Hornets again. You know, um, is it my if shirt? That, if that would have happened, what is that? I can't see it. Oh, the Golden Nugget. <laughs> I, like, I just realized. But, you know, it's it's to me, it's all about the timing, and nobody, like Trump said, nobody could have foreseen it. <laughs> well, you know, hey, I don't want to get political, but you know, um, last thing, Chris, because we gotta move on, because I really, really, really want to get into this top ten. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to tell you that, hey, at the end of the day, we all hurting for money, even the billionaires. Yeah. Well, nah, I don't feel sorry for them. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong, man. They got a they, – listen, they got a massive cushion to fall back on. So it's not, not – I'm not feeling sorry for anybody, to be honest with you. Everybody's they in there. They got to so they got to pay for all those hidden babies, man. I wish I was a hidden baby. Uh -oh. With my money. Hey, uh, what's – uh? Chris, what's going on with uh, WrestleMania, man? Oh, man, it sucked. That's how I can tell you, man. It was the most horrible put-together WrestleMania. <laughs> they tell you I did something. not expect that from you. No, no, it was so horrible. And that literally, like, a lot of the – even the entertainers, because that's what they call them now. I don't call them wrestlers in WWE. They're sports entertainers. Um, even they were really, really upset that, that Vince McMahon even still pushed it. You know, they, they did it from their, their, uh, their practice facility – um, I mean, you're, they could have easily put this on postponed it because especially when you have like somebody like Brock Lesnar is going to give the, is going to lose the belt and you want that crowd reaction. There was no crowd reaction. Whoa. Nothing. Well, it was hard. Is it, is it, is it, isn't it kind of weird looking with no crowd? Because at, the way I saw it, it was almost cringeworthy with well, Gronk taking over. And oh, that was stupid as fuck. But listen, let me tell you something. The reasons why I and, – and, man, I wish Sean was here because he's a big wrestling fan too. But this is why WWE has lost so many of its fans because they don't allow the individual wrestlers to develop into their characters, right? A lot of this stuff is written down for them, and it's very lame as hell as it is. So – these guys don't know how to perform with or without audiences, right? So now you have an audience that can't even boo the hell at their corny ass lines and their corny, and it just <laughs> looks crazy. That's why when you watch AEW, they've been doing their own, you know, show without without fans, but they've been using their own wrestlers as fans. They've made it because they developed and really put together, like you know that that uh, that that the storytelling it makes right. sense even though there's no audience and they know how to speak on the microphone this That's weird crazy ridiculous vince mcmahon is a fool yeah i don't think i'm a fan of gronk just yet you shouldn't be he is not <laughs> hey he's a champ bro hey the 24-hour seven champ yeah he'll lose that tomorrow i'm sure the mo hey the most prestigious the the greatest championship he's won so far even above the super bowl championship oh. according to him that's what he really? Said. He said that? Yeah. No, he was paid to say that. Vince McMahon wrote him a nice little check. <laughs> He's an entertainer, Chris. <laughs> hey. hey, you do what you got to do, man. Do what you got to do. All right, do. fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Of course, you always know we boys are going to put it together for the people. People of Houston, H-Town, Texas, stand up. Yes, sir. Mr. Chris, Mr. Quall. Yeah, we out. Peace. Yeah.